Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a to-do list using HTML, CSS and without the need for any JavaScript. Yes, it is possible and it's going to look something like this. It even has the ability to check a to-do item and it's going to go to the bottom of the list with a gray background and a strike through the text. Now, all of this is possible using a bit of CSS sorcery that you probably haven't heard of. And I'm going to be showing you that towards the end of the video. But for now, let's head inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. And as always, all of the source code is going to be linked down below if you want to, of course, check it out as you watch this video. So let's begin inside the index.html file. It currently has a linked CSS style sheet and heading inside the body, we can create a new div with a class of container. So this here is going to be the main container for every single item within the to-do list, okay? Inside this container, let's create a to-do item. Let's give a new div with a class of to-do. And inside here, we can create two input fields, one for the text itself, and of course, a second one for the checkbox. So we can say here, input with a type of text and a class of to-do underscore underscore value. Let's also give this a placeholder of empty inside brackets, just like that. And finally, we can also uh, drop down here and create a second to do this one with a type of checkbox. We can get rid of the name and ID and head to the beginning here, give this a class of to do underscore underscore checkbox. Okay, so this right here is all the HTML we need for a single item within the list. Uh, I'm just gonna duplicate this line a few more times just to of course create a couple of items to work with when styling it in the CSS. So going inside the browser right here, I'll refresh and we get something like this. We can of course enter some text and check the box, it's all gonna work, all right? So let's now use CSS to convert this right here into this right here. So heading back inside VS Code within the main.css file, let's target the class of container. So the container itself is gonna have a display of flex and a flex direction of column. Now, these two properties here are critical to making the ordering work at the end where we can uh, place the checked item at the bottom of the list. So make sure you have these two properties right here. Let's also give this a width of 300 pixels, a box shadow of three pixels, three pixels, then 10 pixels, RGBA 000, 0, 0, 0 0.154, nice, uh, you know, box shadow, and a border top of five pixels solid, then the decode green, just like this, and the same goes for the bottom, and this, of course, is just extra styling to make it look a little bit nicer. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. Let's now move on to styling up each to-do item. So let's target the to-do class and give this a display of flex and a justify content of space between. So these two properties are going to ensure that the actual checkbox itself is gonna appear on the right side. I'll refresh the browser and we get this right here. Let's also apply some padding of 1EM to of course, add some space around each to-do item, and we get this right here. Let's now go back in the CSS and style up the actual text box uh, itself or themselves, right? So I can now target the to-do underscore underscore value. And for these ones, let's begin with a background of transparent. The reason for a transparent background is because I want the gray to seep in from behind when the item is checked. Let's also give this a border of none and an outline of none. And I can also apply some of my own font styling. So I'll say a font family of quicksand, then sans serif. You can of course make this whatever you like. And the same goes for the font size of 1EM and the font weights of bold. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, and we get this right here. Let's test out this input field. I'll say uh, DOM and I'll copy this a few more times and we can see here we actually aren't using the full width 
that we have available to us. So let's go back inside here and just add a flex grow of one to the to do value. And because we're inside a flex box here, this right here is going to ensure that the input field takes up the remaining space. I can try it again uh, with some more text. And now of course, it's gonna take up that full width that we have available to us. Let's now go back inside the CSS and we can begin the actual magic where you check the item and things happen. So this is gonna be done using a relatively new CSS pseudo class called has. Okay, so what has does is it allows you to begin at the parent element and check if it contains a child with a given selector. So going back inside the browser here, if I was to say, for example, take the bins out, then I check this box. I'm saying here, okay, cool. Let's begin at the parent to do item, this whole to do div right here. And let's check if this item has a checked checkbox. If it does, we can apply some styles. So going back inside the CSS here, let's target the to do, then say colon has. Now, just real quickly, be careful when using this in production websites or apps because the compatibility isn't perfect at the moment. It is still a relatively new uh, pseudo class, but of course this right here is just a fun project, so it shouldn't matter too much for this scenario, okay? But keep that in mind, be sure to check compatibility before you use this in production. So let's also within the has here say to do underscore underscore checkbox, then say colon checked. Okay, if a to do has a checkbox that is checked, then we can apply some styles. Let's say a color of triple five for a medium gray on the text as well as a background of a very light gray for the background and also a text decoration of line through. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, say something like take the bins out, press the checkbox and bang, we get that styling. So this right here is all due to this magic, not magic, but you get what I mean, this very special and useful has pseudo class, okay? Now, one last thing to do is of course, to make these items go to the bottom. Now, I just want to go back in the HTML here and just add a value for the top one, which says take the bins out, just so we can, of course, uh, work with it a little bit quicker. Go back in the browser refresh, and of course, now it's going to be there permanently. Okay, but going back inside the CSS here, let's now do the last step. So, within this has, we can say order equal to one. So, the order CSS property is a special property that, uh, that applies to these flex items, which basically means you can specify the order in which they display because all of these to-dos right here, these three to-dos by default, uh, they have an order of zero. So all of these say order zero. But if we say for these special cases, an order of one, it's gonna push those items to the bottom because of course one is more than zero. So if I go back in the browser here, refresh, and I check this box, bang, it goes on the bottom. If I use the dev tools here and I inspect this item, we can see that in the HTML, it is still at the top here in the list, right? But of course, the style of order one is gonna push it to the bottom because of course, all of these ones here have an order of zero by default. So that is how we're able to push that to the bottom. And the last thing to address here is of course, the fact that you can't actually add any new items. You know, maybe uh, we can't do that just yet without JavaScript. So if you do want to, uh, you know, have some more items to work with, you can just copy this a few more times. And of course, now go back in the browser, you have 12 items to choose from as opposed to three. So that is all for today's video. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.